few more words from my side and then I will give uh, the word to my friends, dear friends and colleagues, Eleni and Oknyan. Uh, about this summit, I just want to share one of my intentions for making this uh, event. Uh, at the core of my motivation is to create a space uh, for our deep humanity to be explored, discovered, and maybe manifested. I really hope this, this space and this webinars will give us a chance to um, gain new knowledge and information about the world, about life, and about our deep selves. And it's so great to see your faces here, and it brings me motivation, and I feel like stepping now a little bit behind and just giving the words to my beloved friends, Ugnan and Eleni. Yes, and I'm just trying to, yep. Thank you for unmuting me. I want to say how excited I am. I'm scrolling through the uh, screens with so many faces and I feel so, so excited and so grateful for all these known and unknown faces that are here with us. And really, it's a uh, it's great pleasure, great, great honor of being with all of you here with this, this event because I know that we are very excited about it because it's uh, something that we do from our hearts and from our souls and this is this is what we are doing this is why we are doing it because we are also concerned about what is happening around and seeing so many people who are here means that there is much more hope that it's visible and yeah following following my friend Bogdan's invitation, I will also share why I'm doing this. And uh, it's, uh, it's very, for me, it's very easy. I'm doing it to, to be sure that there will be possible future for my kids and the kids and offsprings of all living beings on earth. And uh, yeah, I believe that uh, by our action, our single and common action, we can contribute to the world that is based on uh, solidarity, cooperation, and love. And uh, yeah. thank you very much for being here. Thank you. And uh, yeah, peace, Eleni. Hello, good afternoon or good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, all right, great, thank you. Well, I want to tell you that I am also very touched just looking at all of your faces and the ones who don't have a camera. Somehow um, magic happens also through internet and vibes do rec are received and vibes do travel. And um, I'm very touched by your presence uh, and about the trust that you are about to um, offer to us. But about, um, mostly I want to thank you about the time you're dedicating uh, to yourself and to the whole world uh, in these times of transformation and for listening to your inner voice that is accepting this invitation to step into being fully human. And I want to tell you that I'm here because I believe in this capacity of each one of us and everyone to see his and her own beauty and to see the beauty around. In that sense, when we see the inner beauty, we are not engaging into harming other beings beauty but we are um, we want to coexist in harmony with with everything that is around us oh i'm very touched so yeah a little bit of emotional you are going to see me uh, changing different faces but that's also part of being human no yeah mm -hmm. mm. So welcome, welcome everyone to the Moving Beyond Summit um, 
becoming fully human in times of transformation. And welcome to this first webinar, which is about finding the old paths, the old paths in a fragmented world. And at this point, I want to check with my colleagues if they want to, did I actually share my name? Did I tell you that what my name is? Yeah, I don't know yet. Well, um, it's an interactive workshop, so I will be asking you questions, although maybe you are not able to answer, but I get some response somehow. So I'm not sure if I told my name, but my name is Eleni and I come from Cyprus and I'm very, very happy to be friends with Ognian and Bogdan and to see and be in the company of all of you today. And um, are we, I want to ask my colleagues, are we moving on with the next thing? Do you, yes? Yes, all right, so. In order uh, for us to enter into the first webinar, we have um, a poem for you. We have a poem for you and um, you know, poems are uh, sacred words. If you feel like you can close your eyes and let your uh, body absorb these sacred words. Um, if you don't feel like closing your eyes, it's also okay. You can just stare at one point. Just have this intention of opening, um, opening your uh, mind, heart, and also body and soul uh, in the next poem. Hmm. And this poem is written by William Stafford and it's called The Way It Is. The Way It Is, it's the name of the poem. And here comes the poem. Before we, yeah, maybe before the poem, just inhale and exhale. Yeah, and here now comes the poem. There is a thread you follow. There is a thread you follow. It goes among things that change, but it doesn't change. It goes among things that change, but it doesn't change. People wonder about what you are pursuing. You have to explain about the thread. But it is hard for others to see. It is hard for others to see. Why you hold it, you can't get lost. Why you hold it, you can't get lost. Tragedies happen. People get hurt or die and you suffer and get old. Tragedies happen. People get hurt or die and you suffer and get old. Nothing you do can stop times unfolding. Nothing you do can stop times unfolding. You don't ever let go of the thread. You don't ever let go of the thread. The way it is, and I'm gonna read it one more time. There is a thread you follow. It goes among things that change, but it doesn't change. People wonder about what you are pursuing. You have to explain about the thread, but it is hard for others to see. Why you hold it, you can't get lost. Tragedies happen, people get hurt or die, and you suffer and get old. Nothing you do can stop times unfolding. You don't ever let go of the thread. Mm, that was the poem. That was the poem that gives us the thread. And if you have your eyes closed, you can breathe in deeply and exhale and come back. Mm. The Way It Is by William Stafford. And that's the thread, that's this precious thread of life on which we are 
holding on to and it's not just life in the me in the meaning in the definition of survival but it is life in the sense of meaning of being part of something beyond ourselves greater than ourselves and we hold on this on this thread and as much as long as we hold on to that we can't get lost because our soul lays there and our soul belongs to the soul of the earth and so the whole earth is there guiding us and we can't get lost because we belong we know where we belong and people are wondering what are you pursuing and maybe they don't understand this meaning this soul that is guiding us this invisible thing mm. this transformation that is happening within us we have to explain about the threat and although tragedies happen and we cannot stop the time unfolding we never let go of the thread because this is the thread that is helping us, is guiding us on how to become fully human. And this is the thread that is showing us and navigating us to remember, become again a member of the old paths of the transformation of belonging, of meaning, of soul and earth. Mm. Are you with us still? Yeah. Mm. So this is how we begin today's webinar with this thread. And we are going to move on with the thread. And let's see what else is going to be unfolded as we travel along with this thread. Yeah. We are now going to pursue and follow a thread that doesn't necessarily go goes forward, but actually goes backwards. And it will bring us back in time. Uh, because we were thinking that in order to, uh, to look at where we are in these times of humanity and where we want to be, what changes we need to do we were thinking that it might be helpful to go back in the past and to have a, a journey through our history the history of humankind so we want to offer you a short presentation a short uh, uh, powerpoint with some images and some keywords about where are we coming from as humans? What happened along the way that made us the ones we are in, in these living times? And I have to tell you that uh, it's very challenging what I'm, I'm about to do because I'm inviting you to follow me through a presentation about the last 200,000 years of human evolution and destiny in maximum 15 minutes so i will not cover every single moment but i will just touch some key moments that from my point of view are important uh, to have a big picture or of what happened with humanity and with us so you may find some things that are left out unintentionally just because of the sake of the time so i will share my screen now uh, and I will invite you in a short uh, journey. Okay, good. So here we are uh, speaking about the journey of humankind. And this is a picture with some African uh, Bushmen, indigenous people of the Kalahari Desert. And uh, our story uh, starts 200,000 years before Christ in an age that is called the Old Stone Age. In those times, humans were hunter-gatherers. 
in those times, uh, people lived in small family units and sometimes larger groups called bands. And it was an egalitarian community where people really had to cooperate with each other in order to survive. Slowly throughout the, the years, human beings spread all over the world, occupying all the continents and even the remote islands and high mountains. What was characteristic to those people was the intimate and deep connection with nature. They needed to have this connection with nature in order to basically survive. Uh, in order to, to survive, uh, they needed to know which plants to eat, the behaviors of the animals, the patterns of season. Uh, so this was the, the first uh, part, the old stone age. Something happened around 10,000 years BC. A new era began, the new stone age. And this was agricultural revolution. In those times, uh, humans domesticated the plants and domesticated the animals. And uh, this was, has a tremendous implication in human history and in the development of humanity. People started leaving behind the, the nomadic ways and started building villages and permanent settlements closer to the fields they were working and also closer to the, the rivers. And here we have in the map that you can see uh, here, we have the areas on the planet where the first civilizations emerged all right good i just wanna check to see if you are still with me so i'm gonna from time to time pop up this little window to see that everything is all right okay good uh, yeah so in this time in this era people live safer lives you know farther from the wild animals uh, they were living in the houses and not uh, so much in uh, okay, so I'm, um, okay, sorry, just, uh, you know, so many, oh, so many things. So, okay, moving, moving back. So in these times, people live safer lives, but at the same time, slowly and slowly getting farther from the wild nature. Uh, moving on in, in history, uh, the settlements grew and evolve from villages to cities and to states and then to empires. Uh, and something really interesting happened, uh, an event that is about to change the course of history, was the rise of male domination that now we call patriarchy. And in this system, uh, in the agricultural based uh, villages and uh, settlements, the male got more power and began to dominate the society. And uh, the new order uh, led and ruled by men was very much based on hierarchies, on armies that needed to protect the territories, to protect the, uh, the food and uh, the animals, the riches, and also uh, were input for wars in order to conquer new, new areas for expansions. Of course, there was a lot of growth and de development in the society on different levels, you know, the buildings, the basic and fundamentals of medicine, of philosophy, they all emerged in those times. No, uh, no doubt, great uh, evolution results. But at the same time, we need to, uh, to see that the, the city walls separated even more the human world from the wild world. Uh, this way of living uh, was, of course, not everywhere in the world. There were so many other uh, nations and tribes and indigenous people, but it was, you know, growing and growing more this side of domination of empires. And this revealed the dark side of humanity, which was based and described on competition and, and dominance. And some 
consequences of these uh, this characteristics of the dark side was the conquest and destruction of the indigenous and nature-based cultures. And we have here up in the right, the map of the Roman Empire, which spread by conquering and basically destroying all the indigenous nations that occupied certain areas. As a direct effect of this was the creation of deep multi-generational traumas that led to the perpetration of oppression. Let's just imagine, you know, people who were uh, destroyed and traumatized by war were in a psychic state which allow further oppression and violent behaviors. And by the uh, exchange of, you know, the indigenous natures who were conquered and destroyed by the empires and the occupation, the sense of the place was weakened. Because new people from new, new places were just simply moved there. And the sense of deep connection with the place was, was weakened. Uh, moving on in the Middle Ages, or the Dark Ages, as many people call them, uh, we have a sense of the social structure as being very well developed. And you can see it here in the right picture, the pyramid uh, of the feudal state, where the peasants were on the bottom of the society uh, doing the hard work you know, and maybe having the least because their, their, the products of their work were taken by the nobles, by the king, and they were uh, suffering in poverty. And in the right image, in the left image, you can see something that symbolizes uh, an, important, uh, an important element that contributed even more to the fragmentation of, uh, of the humans. Uh, and this is the institution of Inquisition. The Inquisition was developed by the Catholic Church in order to oppress and to destroy and to eradicate all those people and groups of people that were considered to be heretics, that were uh, doing heresies and were not following the Catholic Church policy. And the Inquisition went on for at least 500 years, uh, suppressing, destroying, killing uh, many, many people like, like women. And here we see again the, the clash, the battle between the patriarch, uh, the, the male domination fighting against the feminine, which was at the time holding a projection uh, for the wild nature. There were also many uh, indigenous priests who were also decimated and killed. Uh, those who were still carrying the roots of uh, indigenous and nature-based culture. So in these times, there, were, there was even more fragmentation going on. As we move on in the history, um, Europe, uh, develop itself in such a way that could explore the new world. And besides the new continent being discovered, it also brought a confrontation and a clash with the indigenous people. And we can see indigenous people are as, as, the, um, as those first people that I was telling you about, those hunter-gatherers that spread all over the globe and uh, develop their uh, nations and tribal um, systems and ways of living. But when the Europeans met with these cultures, they could just simply not understand because they were so separated from the wild world, from the earth and from nature, that they really could not understand their ways of being. So that was a, just the beginning of a global genocide and we all know and we are all familiar with what happened in those times. Uh, moving on, we reach another threshold, the Industrial Revolution, which is uh, the second biggest revolution after the agricultural one. And in these times, uh, 
many big changes happened in a much faster rhythm. And we see some of the effects, economic expansions, global empires, growth of colonialism. And in order for the industrial system to flourish and to grow, it needed to exploit the natural resources and the human labor for economic growth. And we see here in these two images that for me speaks so much how the educational system was developed and conceived in such a way to serve the industrial systems. And we have here so many similarities between the classrooms and the factory rooms. And nowadays we are still following, unfortunately, in many places, in many countries, uh, the same industrial-based educational system. Of course, industrial revolution brought many changes, innovation, progress on so many, so many uh, layers. But at the same time, we need to ask the, the question, what were the costs um, on the individual, on the society in general? And something worth mentioning in this phase is that nature uh, shifted from the perception on, on nature shifted from nature as a source into nature as a resource, resource just to be used for economic growth. Uh, here is a new perspective on how the industrial revolution evolved throughout time. And we can say that we are part of the fourth phase the intelligence revolution. And we are now benefiting immensely uh, in this conference by the development of the intelligence and technologies that allow us to communicate with each other. Okay, moving on, getting closer and closer to the current present moment. And another question is important to, to rise. And we need to ask ourselves, where are we now? And not necessarily where are we now in terms of uh, innovation, new products, technologies, and so on, but mainly to ask our, the questions, where are we now in terms of human soul, in terms of our emotions, well-being, mental state, emotional state, and so on. Some clues about where we might be as humanity uh, in this very moment is given by Joanna Macy, who's an amazing, phenomenal uh, eco-philosopher, an American eco-philosopher, uh, who in her book, Active Hope, is writing about three different stories in which humanity finds itself. The first story is called Business as Usual. And some of the narratives of this story is that there is little need to change the way we live. I mean, this is the norm and we just simply need to, to continue growing, growing up, developing new, new technologies, new uh, yeah, buildings just to continue the, lay, the way we live. Another element of this narrative is that economic growth is essential for prosperity. So we need economies to grow and to develop in order to prosper. And the main idea is about getting ahead. Getting ahead, uh, it's again about competition. Competition between uh, individuals, between corporations, between companies, between nations, just to get ahead, to be the first one that is reaching a certain point. And the question that is worth asking in this time especially in this first story, is that, is it possible to have infinite growth on a finite planet? This is just a question to stay with, to, to yeah, wonder about. Moving on to the second story that Jonah Macy is calling the great unraveling. And this unraveling is as if the veil is falling down and we get to see what is behind the scenes. 
what is behind the, the beautiful products that advertise in front of our eyes and just to see that there is economic decline, uh, resource depletion, tremendous climate change, social division, you know, the poor getting poorer, the rich getting richer, wars, and above all, and maybe the most uh, harmful, at least for me, is the mass extinction of species. And in this story, this is a story when humans wake up from the trance, a trance in which maybe we have been uh, sleeping for a couple of hundreds of years. And I'm just looking at what's happening now in the world with all of us uh, locked in, in our houses, with our mobility restricted, with many regulations. And I'm just thinking of the coronavirus. And I'm just wondering is that, is it possible that the coronavirus is a wake up call that we humans receive from a worried planet? I'm just worried uh, that, uh, yeah, about this coronavirus. And I'm just asking is this a wake up call? Are we able enough to find the real deep meaning of what's happening now, nowadays around us and within us? So yeah, here we are in the present moment. After a very brief overview of the human history, just following the thread of humanity, trying not to get lost while we hold it, trying to learn from the past in order to be more prepared for the future. And yeah, finding the lost paths in a fragmented world. This is what I consider relevant and important to share in these times. And probably these words, these messages evoke, provoke some feelings, some emotions in them uh, on, on a very wide scale. Um, yeah. I'm just wondering what happened within you. But I, I think uh, we are just opening uh, some, you know, conversations, some, some thoughts, and then we'll have in the last part of the webinar, um, times for questions and answer. And with this occasion, I'm just reminding you, if you have questions that popped out, out of these presentations and the further conversation, please write them in the, in the chat below and we will collect them and address them, some of them, in the, uh, in the right time for questions and answers. Okay, this is what I wanted to share at this moment. Now I will just give my uh, microphone, I will mute my microphone and give my word back to Eleni. Mm. Thank you, Bogdan, for traveling us back in time and reminding us how we are um, honored and lucky and uh, responsible for living in this, in this world, in this present moment, in this uh, fragmented world. And <clears throat> one way to find uh, the old ways, to find the old ways, the old paths in this fragmented world is to go back to the stories uh, that have survived over the centuries. And actually the word stories, we are about to tell you a story. And just before we tell you the story, something about the word story itself, because the word story um, is very, very connected with the word storage because it keeps inside, it encapsulates the meanings, the um, wisdom that we maybe are lacking right now, we're missing right now. But you know how history is repeating uh, herself and we forget, but 
our ancestors knew. So we are going to tell you a story, a very, very old story um, from the indigenous uh, people of uh, North America, mm, from the Indians, from the Native Americans. And it is a story about the knowledge. Uh, it's a story about the cave of the knowledge. Uh, it, is, it, it, it is said that there is this cave, and in this cave, there, there inside, the whole wisdom is laying, and all the things that we need to know and he, in order to heal ourselves are being there, storaged in this cave, in this dark cave. But people are looking at it. Everybody wants to find it, but nobody can. Nobody can because everybody is very busy to compete, to run faster, to deliver more, to deliver faster. Or they cannot see it because they are looking with the wrong eyes, with the wrong perception, perspective. But it is very near us, yeah? This cave of wisdom, this cave of knowledge, the, this cave of, of healing is very near us. And if one finds it, he or she is going to find inside an old woman, an old woman who is sitting there between the darkness and the light in the cave, weaving, weaving with her hands the most beautiful garment, garment clothes of the world. The most beautiful, most elegant, most precious garment of the world, right? The, the most beautiful clothes. And she's weaving this beautiful clothes with, uh, with the um, mm, quills of the porcupine. Mm, and so the little animal, the hedgehog, she's having these um, quills, the spikes, and she wants to make very fine weaving. So she has to uh, bite with her teeth these uh, quills in order to make, make them very fine. And as she's doing this years after he, years, her teeth are becoming smaller, like they um, almost don't appear above, uh, above her. Uh, I miss this word. What is it called? Above her. Hmm. But you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Uh, yeah. So she is there weaving this most beautiful garment, and uh, and she is there spends all of her time, and she grew old, uh, and yet she keeps she keeps weaving. She keeps weaving and she's about to finish this beautiful cloth she's doing. Um, but at the same time, from time to time, because she's weaving this beautiful garment, but at the same time, she needs to take care of the old cauldron, which is in the back of the cave. So in the back of the cave, there is an old cauldron over the oldest fire, very, very old fire. It's supposed to be the oldest thing in the world. And in this cauldron, in this big pot, she holds inside all the seeds and all the roots of all the plants and herbs and grains and trees of the world. And she's making this stew in this huge cauldron over the oldest being on earth, which is the old fire. And from time to time, she needs to leave the beautiful garment in order to go back in the dark part of the cave. And there she needs to stir up uh, the, the stew with, with, the natural, with the natural seeds. Are you with me in the story? Are you with me still? Yeah, okay. So from time to time she goes back because if she leaves these seeds, unattended then they will burn some of them might burn and we don't want this to happen because what is going to happen if some of these seeds are burned if some of these species are lost forever and this old woman is leaving this moment the beautiful garment which is 
which is about to be finished. She's very, very near to finish it. And she goes in the back to steer the cauldron. But in the meantime, the moment she lifts herself from the chair, the old dog that is also, uh, was also all the time next to her, wakes up and he approaches, he approaches the clothes she was weaving for years. And there he finds a loose thread and he put his teeth in this thread and then the whole garment is dissolved, the whole garment is unraveled, is now becoming a chaos on the floor. Everything that she has been doing for so many years is now chaos, unraveled, just threads all over. And the old woman is coming back from the cauldron. And she sees a mess. She sees the chaos. And she sits there in silence, ignoring the dog, looking at the comet that she has been doing the whole time. And then she bows down and she picks up a thread. And as soon as she picks up this thread, aiming to start weaving it all over again, a new vision comes in front of her, a new vision of a new cloth, a new garment, the more, even more beautiful, even more precious, even more elegant, even more colorful, a new design, more majestic than the previous one. And so the old woman begins again the weaving. Hmm. That's the story. That's the story of the old woman in the cave of knowledge. And you might sense that this story is bringing a variety of emotions mm -hmm. and it's a story about chaos and recreation about collapse and renewal it's a it's a story about the threat that we are holding upon mm -hmm. like the poem we said in the beginning uh, and our role, our invitation is to find this cave and become this woman and weave our thread of life. And, the, and in this story, actually, there are two stories. Are you with me still? Yeah? Yeah, great. Thank you. There are two stories within this story. And the first story is the story of the world, the whole world that is now unraveling, as Bogdan said before, that the species are disappearing, that the uh, old ways of the world, the, the resources are disappearing, and the, the climate is changing, and the resources are getting less. But at the same time, it's the story of the individual soul, the soul of each one of us, that is also aiming to weave this story of our life, to make this beautiful garment. And these stories, the individual story, falls into the bigger story, the story of the world, because we are living in this world. And uh, our yeah, our soul quest, what we are pursuing, is also connected with the world we are living in. And this is a story of transformation. It's a story of uh, not up changing what or improving what we have been doing so far, but it's a story of leaving behind, shedding 
off the old forms of ourselves that are not any more helpful, that are not any more sustaining our own individual life and the life of the world. And therefore, we transform into a new life, a new design, a new image that is life-sustaining, that is life-enhancing. This is what the story is telling us, yeah, to inviting us to transform, to find this dark cave and to become this woman and weave our own thread, with our own thread, the gourmet, the, the cloth of our soul. And as we do it, we also weave the soul of the earth, the whole earth, the whole world. The whole, all, all the living beings are in this together. Hmm. I would love to hear more from you now. And we are looking forward your questions uh, in the chat. Yeah, hoping that this uh, story brought some storage messages for you on a personal and on a collective level. And let's take this thread and continue. And let's see what else is there for us today to be discovered. Thank you very much. Bogdan and uh, Eleni for this uh, historical and poetic view to what we want to address today. And uh, before starting with my part, I want to, to share with all of you that uh, I really love my part today. I really love my task because my task is to, to start from where we are and to bring you to the future, to, to have a look into the future. And uh, before sharing with you our vision about the future, what, what we strongly believe will happen, I want, to, I want to invite you for a moment to close your eyes and to open your window of imagination Take a deep breath and just let your imagination fly into this endless universe with all its beauty, all its diversity. And just imagine what future you want next generation to live in. Imagine the future that you would like to leave to them. The legacy of today's generation for the future one. And just stay for a few seconds with this imaginary future and feel it as strong as possible. Breathe in it. Feel it with your heart. Now take a deep breath and gently, slowly came back to this moment. You can open your eyes and really root yourself in the moment that we are now, the moment that we are living. And store this picture of your desired future in your heart. Take it there. And from this point, take the story that I'm going to tell you. And it's not the imaginary story, it's not the mythologic story. It's a real story. The story 
of a visioner, a person who we already mentioned. This is the story of uh, Joanna Macy. And the vision that we strongly believe is started with her, with her imagination. And I will start from the last slides that uh, Bogdan finished his presentation, Finding the Lost Paths in a Fragmented World. And he will share with you one of the possible paths that uh, humanity can take from here on. And this is the path of the great turning. In her work, Joanna Macy is telling that uh, today we are living in the time of the third great revolution. We already know that the first two are the agricultural revolution and industrial revolution. Today we are living in the third revolution, the time of the third one. Some people are addressing this as an ecological revolution, some people are addressing it as a sustainability revolution, but uh, many people are already, already saying and naming it as the great turning, the moment of the great turning. Uh, one, one thing that in the modern world is very visible is that the great turning this revolution need to need to happen much faster than the previous one. The, the, the agricultural revolution took about 2000 years for the humanity to make the shifts. The industrial revolution went in about 200 years. And having in mind the capacity of humanity today, the uh, speed of the growth, economic growth, the, the speed of destruction that our, our modern civilization are uh, putting on the earth and nature, it is said that the Great Turning needs to happen much faster. So for this revolution, we need to allocate and commit much more resources. One of the things related to uh, the big unraveling that Bogdan was saying is when we look in the industrial growth society that we are living in now, is that it creates imbalance. The economy in industrial growth society is unbalanced because it puts only effort to increase the profit. The profit which is only one element of all the dimension of sustainability in society. And it's happening mainly by extracting and using natural resources. So from the systemic point of view, if in one system we have this balance and only one part of the system is becoming bigger, so it means that the system is unstable and it will collapse sooner or later. And we are approaching this moment of collapse of industrial growth society. The great turning is the process of shifting from industrial growth society to life-sustaining society. Life-sustaining society is the society of balance between all the parts involved in it. Society that is balanced in human relationship, in the way we are living, the way we are inhabiting the earth, the balance between people and all living and non-living beings on earth in the way that life is the most important thing and not individual human life but the life of global ecosystem with every single being in it and what we need to understand about the process of great turning that we in fact living in this time is that the great turning have three main interrelated components. The three main components that will lead to the great turning is on also in, uh, we can say that they are in three levels. First level or first component is holding actions. These are the actions that are directed to slowing down or stopping the damage that modern society is doing to the planet's ecosystem and resources. So this needs to happen on global level. 
all the people, countries, industries, governments need to be engaged in holding actions. All the activities that stop the damages. Second level is the structural change. If we see that today's structures, decision-making systems, governments, uh, social, social um, norms, laws, and uh, businesses don't work, we need to imagine and invent new structures that can support life-sustaining society. And this is the level that can happen in the more, more local, more uh, local dimension, community level, city level, country level. So this is the second level. The global is to hold destruction. Next level on the community level is to imagine and to create new structures. And third level is shift of consciousness. Shift of individual consciousness imagining and living totally new worldview and values that are different than the one of industrial growth society. The one that can create this balance between all the elements involved in our, in our bigger web of life or in more than human worlds. Taking people, taking the human from the very center of the things and putting it on the right place, the equal place with all elements of the ecosystem can be this kind of shift of consciousness. And from this point of view, creating the new consciousness that is based on values of mutual understanding, cooperation, support, life sustaining and life enhancing. Very briefly, in, uh, we, can, we can see in all these dimensions that uh, there are already things happening. In holding actions, we have a, a strong, strong international movements against disrupting the, the, uh, the environment. We have a lot of organizations that are in the field of lobbying and advocacy for new laws. There are countries with good examples of very strong environmental policies and vision about sustainable development on all the, all the systems in them. In second dimension, the structural changes, uh, despite of analysis of structural cases, also the creation of structural alternatives are going on. And we can mention here many good examples of small community initiatives like eco villages, also global initiatives like fair trade movements, solidarity economics, other, other types of um, small scale, small scale uh, alternative business models like circular, circular economies or nature resource based economies also new new trends in uh, new trends in management like holacracy and sociocracy so all these things are good examples of what can structural changes in great turning can look like and our purpose is to increase these structural changes to imagine and create other new and even better patterns and the shift of consciousness the, fund the fundamental shift in worldview and values and I strongly believe that this event, Moving Beyond Summits, is a good example of this kind of shifting individual consciousness. Being with nearly 100 people together in this event, in this very moment, speaking about future of the world, the new and different imaginative future of the world, is sign that this shift of individual consciousness to new worldview and new values is happening. And um, I want to, I want to uh, close my part with uh, uh, this quote of uh, Joanna Macy, that in fact, she's saying that if we succeed in what we are doing now, if we are successful in all three dimensions, the future generation will really be able to name these periods the great turning. And uh, one, one statement of her that uh, we all like very much is that today is 
a great time to be alive. A great time for all of us to be alive. Just to give ourselves, to offer our efforts and our actions in creation of this new imaginative future. And yeah, this is, this is uh, the message that uh, we, are, we are bringing with, uh, with our work. And this webinar is part of our contribution, our contribution, the three of us in the great turning. With our work, we, we, bring, we bring every one of us something that we are really passionate about. In the next three webinars, you will meet the passion of every one of us in specific topic. And uh, you will see our personal, our personal ideas and personal uh, visions about how we can change the world. And we hope that by today's short and small inputs, today's way of bringing you from the very, very old ancient times through the poetry, mythical stories, and future vision, we set a common ground about what we want to deliver as a message in our next webinars. And really, thank you very much for being with us. And uh, I, will, I will close with this and we'll bring back the words to Bogdan. Thank you. <clears throat> wow, thank you so much, Ogi for uh, bringing the third uh, piece of the puzzle together. Um, yeah, I can see that some questions are slowly coming up in our chat uh, box. Uh, thank you so much again for you, Eleni and Ogi, for the story for, and also for me, because I, I was also doing a short input and presentation. So mainly our uh, part, uh, our input part has ended here but we really want to invite you to a uh, conversation and unfortunately due to the big number of participants we can only take questions that are written by you in the, the chat box and then take some of these questions and then the three of us or only one of us will uh, give some input on this so maybe just uh, take some time for the information to um, to settle down within you, uh, maybe just a brief overview. We were starting with the poem, with the, the thread that we are following. And then we had a short moment overview of the history of humankind. Then again, exploring and listening the story of the woman in the cave weaving the garment. And now uh, the third story, about the great turning uh, so yeah we are inviting you to uh, write down your questions your thoughts here and then to see what uh, we can come up with and i just saw one question that i want to uh, address uh, maybe ogi ognian ogi is the the name that because we are friends maybe just a little bit of informal <laughs> time the three of us we are very good friends. We met in 2013. And since that moment, we uh, do many common projects and we, we have a very good match. Our souls are overlapping on many layers and we are working together in uh, doing the great turning basically. Uh, so uh, yeah, I just mentioned Ogi because this is how we informally friendly call each other. Uh, so the question that I saw here and that I want to address and open it to both of you is um, how is this shift in consciousness going to happen? Like the third uh, dimension of the great turning, how is this shift of consciousness going to happen? So Ognyan or Ogi, Eleni, feel free. I would... Uh... I would share my, my brief answer to it. First of all, uh, it's, it's really necessary to, to start practicing, to start practicing deepening ourselves in everything that we are doing. 
by deepening i mean to 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 increase and open ourselves to present moment with all our dimensions like emotions senses heart centered thinking imagination all the things that are not very much supported in uh, busy everyday life in modern worlds but opening ourselves to our innate evolutionary inherited capacities and resources is in fact the easiest way to shift our consciousness to what we are born with and from this point from this place to imagine and live bigger life that we are born with and uh, more more specific answer about uh, how this can happen i i will i will use the moment to advertise the the third webinar about uh, uh, putting soul and nature in the center of our lives that Bogdan will host and it will explain the, uh, the basics of ecocentric development. So there will be even more specific and concrete uh, answers about the psychological human development and how this can lead to the new consciousness that needs to emerge nowadays. Thank you. All right, so I guess it's my time to share. Yeah, how is this shift in consciousness going to happen? Well, I would say that it starts with um, leaving behind, um, shedding the old ways of, uh, uh, of things that are not serving us anymore. Um, and and I, I would I would emphasize what Oki said before about um, embodying and engaging all our dimensions. And I am going to uh, stress um, and underline a little bit more the physical dimension uh, that our body knows when we are doing something right or when we're doing something wrong. Um, and I want to, yeah, how are we doing? So our body is always giving us signs. Um, our body is very, very closely linked with, um, with our soul and the soul of the world, the soul of the earth. So I would say, follow this intuition. Um, maybe it's not the moment and, and, and step out of this daily story. Let's step out of this daily story of uh, running faster, doing things uh, um, faster, better, um, bigger competition, but to see the big picture of what is happening and as long as, and where am I um, in this picture? I think with just staying with these questions is already a way of uh, shifting the consciousness. Being here is also a way of shifting the consciousness, I would say. And I would say that it starts with us as individuals and then magic happens and things are um, yeah, multiplied. We become agents of change somehow. Mm. Well, that's from my side. I don't know if Bogdan wants to add something or we have the next question. Uh, maybe just a, a short thought about this for me it's also um, a shift of consciousness should be seen also on behavioral level so if uh, something is changing within me in my psyche in my heart it it is really changed if my behavior is changing uh, so for example if i'm going to a workshop about healthy lifestyle and if i hear that certain foods are doing harm on my body and certain foods are, you know, serving my body, uh, then my shift of consciousness, so I got the information, I got the knowledge, but then I'm really shifting my behaviors and then I just keep buying, keep buying those harmful foods and then buying the healthy food and eating the healthy food. And the same goes on different levels, like, you know, relationships, the work that I'm doing, self-care, well-being, and so on. So this is the thing that I wanted to share. Let's see other uh, questions. Um, um, 
So do you believe that history repeats itself even today? Uh, how can we transform to a brighter future? So maybe we can do the same, go again the same round. And um, yeah, maybe do you believe that history repeats itself even today? And how can we transform to a brighter future? Uh, what I can say is, uh, and I will I will try to address also by this answer the previous question, which ends with, what do you think? How much time we have left? And I think it's connected to this one, because from my point of view, the history is evolving with the evolution of people. So the way we evolved, also the history evolves. And if we see any, if we see any similarities with the old ages, it means that something is blocking us. Because looking at the history of many civilizations, there are thousands of years of evolving and thriving until something happened. And this is, this is the, the threshold we are facing now something big is going to happen and no one knows how much time we have left but everyone see that humanity is powerful and if we mobilize if we if we succeed to uh, put all the resources of, of modern technology modern worlds consciousness everything into the direction of changing the future we are able to do it very fast and it can be possible for everyone if we become to share what we in the western world have and use the capacity and resource of every every person and every nation on earth thank you uh, yeah um, maybe now i i know eleni that maybe you also wanted to speak on this but I was just thinking maybe to take more questions uh, and uh, then to answer a little bit for each one of them. And I see one of one question that asks, how can we speed up the process? And the, the process is the process of transformation, of uh, improving, of changing ourselves and the world. So Eleni, if you feel like saying something about how can we speed up this process? Okay, how can we speed up the process of transformation? Mm. Well, I would say, uh, I would repeat some of the things that I said previously, actually. So Bogdan, if you want to add something, you can jump into this, otherwise I will just enrich what I was uh, telling before. How, how can we speed up? I would say, Mm, let's uh, forget what we were doing that is not anymore serving us and let's do new things. And as you said, Bogdan, it's, it's a lot about the behavior and the impact this behavior has. Like, will I use now, will I use this plastic bottle for water or will I um, bring on my own cap? That's one way. Um, what are the clothes I'm wearing? How am I speaking with two other people? This is also a way of speeding up the process. It, uh, am I praying for the earth uh, or for the souls of the other beings? There are so many ways of doing it. And I think in the, in the next webinars, we are going to um, mention a lot of ways to speed up the process. So I want to give back the word to you, Bogdan. Maybe you want to say something else yeah one one thought about this is that uh, i think nature has her rhythm and there's a natural rhythm of everything you know the rhythm of the uh, of the seasons you cannot hurry up you know spring to come when it's already autumn you know so there's a certain rhythm of nature and i think the the challenge and the the problem is that the industrial 
society, they accelerated a lot the rhythm. So everything is happening so fast, so quickly. Innovation, you know, you buy a phone, next day it's already old fashioned. So it should be very quickly, everything. So I think we don't necessarily need to uh, speed up, you know, but we need to connect with the rhythm of the earth, of nature, and just follow it. Uh, and um, nature knows what we need to do. So this is the, I think it's a key uh, moment and important element to connect with nature and listen to the earth, what earth wants me to do, what earth is telling me to do to solve the, the problem, let's say, or to make the great turning. And there is even a beautiful saying that surrendering to earth's intelligence so i need to surrender to earth and to connect deeper with my soul and to hear the voice of the earth and then i'm just going to follow what earth is inviting me to do uh, and there's a beautiful saying and i'm gonna end up with this and then ogi if you have something to add on this uh, and this saying is like this don't rush don't delay just make it so it's really about finding the natural rhythm of doing things thank you for unmuting me uh, as the time is um, is uh, running fast i just want to address one last question and it's uh, one of the last ones in the row which is Change happens one person at a time. How can we positively impact others? How we can positively impact others? Uh, I'm sure that everyone here can name at least one person in their life that impacts them and have influence on their life. And it can be a teacher, it can be a parent, it can be a very famous person. So you see that there are different levels. There are some people who impact one or two, and there are people who impact nations. We know the good examples like Gandhi or bad examples like Stalin. But what we need to know is that every one of them, everyone who impacted nations and worlds are not different than us. They are just humans, they are just people. The difference between them and the rest of the people at that moment of their, their life is that they choose to live the biggest possible life for them. And I strongly believe that every one of us can choose to live a bigger life and impact more people positively. And this is up to us to what extent, how much efforts we can do and how much resources we can allocate for this. And to what extent we can open our wings and really fly into a purpose that we want to fulfill. Okay. As Ogi said, we are slowly uh, getting towards the end of our webinar. There are still a few more pieces, so don't leave yet. Uh, and uh, they are beautiful pieces, I'm telling you. Uh, but maybe before going into the last part of, of the webinar, I'm just, I feel like inviting you to take one minute with your pen and journal and just to spend one minute with yourself and think and write down what are you taking out of this webinar out of these uh, conversations out of these questions maybe what emotions are you <laughs> living with uh, just stay with yourself one minute in silence and then uh, yeah then you'll hear our voices
All right, so maybe you can uh, slowly uh, close this moment. It's an open question, so if you feel like writing more, you can uh, do it after we close this call. Uh, a few last words from my side and then also from my, my colleagues. It was really a great pleasure to have you here to share um, some thoughts that I believe are important in, in this process. My feeling is that it's only the beginning of our work together in this uh, big, big circle, online circle, because we have three more webinars and you are more than welcome there uh, to deepen what we just open up here. So thank you so much from my side. Yeah, my colleagues, dear friends, uh thank you very much Mugdan. i will i will use this moment uh, as we as we um, are prepared just briefly in one two sentences to invite also two of you to um introduce the next webinars and uh, i will start with the next one that is on uh, thursday and uh, the topic will be nature connection and nature-based learning so we'll explore we'll explore the the elements of nature connection and deep nature connection and also there will be uh, a set of practice practices offered for for personal personal work that can help uh, everyone to uh, remember their their part and their place in bigger web of life welcome and uh, join us on thursday Bogdan, will you speak about your webinar? I will speak. Uh, okay, I can say something. I was somehow <laughs> waiting you to, to... Okay, then I can speak. So, well, I can speak because it's chronologically. So just yeah. briefly, the, uh, the Friday uh, webinar is called Having Soul and Nature in the Center of Our Lives. And we are going to speak and explore a very beautiful uh, developmental model, the ecocentric developmental wheel. It's a concept developed by the American psychologist Bill Plotkin, and we are going to explore it in depth, have some tips and uh, practices on how you can use it, and of course, space for questions and interactions. So, more, more than welcome Friday evening. Thank you, Eleni. Now it's your floor till the end <laughs> all right so the the fourth webinar is called what is it called because now i'm losing my words it's called remembering the wisdom of the heart and it's about unearthing um, the wisdom of uh, a kindness mindfulness meaning in life and authentic happiness and how positive well the science of positive psychology reminds us of the old ways of how to be grateful how to be mindful how to be kind and how all these are um, serving our souls and are the souls of the earth and that's on saturday uh, same time all workshops all webinars are um, 
starting at the same time. Mm. The time is 2029, 20, which means that in one minute we should close this meeting. However, I do want to ask you for three or four more minutes extension because we have one last offering for you, um, an offering that's very sacred and that is coming from very, very, well, old and new uh, times. It is, as, uh, it is a song. We want to offer you a song and we want to invite you to begin this shift of consciousness by uh, getting out of the comfort zone and singing together with me. I know it scares you a little bit. I see the smiles in some of the faces. That's a good sign. That's also a way of how to begin this um, um, accelerate or enter in this shift. Um, it's a song that is coming from a tribe um, in Burkina Faso, that's in West Africa. And it is a song um, that is um, calling, it's, it's actually a song uh, about the world that's gone wrong. It's the, the world is gone wrong. Um, Azizona is the first phrase, and it means the world is gone wrong. And the second phrase says, Ezema Kuli, please take us home. The world is gone wrong. Please take us home. And then, in order to call us home, they are calling uh, the, the elders, the elders women and elder men, uh, the mothers, the fathers. And it doesn't mean that we are actually calling um, the old people, but we are calling the elders inside of us, this part of ourselves that is old and wise. When the things are unraveling, when the world has gone wrong, we need the wisdom we hold inside of us to help us and take us back home. And we are going to sing this song a um, couple of times together as a way of calling this wise part of us. And it's not about um, singing it correctly, it's about sharing the bread. It's not about, uh, vo uh, uh, vo what is the word, like uh, really speaking the word as it is, because we are going to sing it in the original language, but it's about, um, it's about sharing this intention of let's step into the shoes of the old woman in the cave. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can close with this thread that is bringing us to the old woman or the old man. So I'm wondering if you can repeat after me. It goes like this. I will say one phrase, you are going to say the phrase. Ready? Azizona. Now you repeat. Azizona. Beautiful. Ezemakuli, Ezemakuli, beautiful. Azizona, your turn. Azizona, Dimamni Badana, Dimamni Badana. Azizona, now you say it. Azizona, great, my turn. Ezemakuli, now your turn. Ezemakuli, my turn. Azizona, your turn. Azizona, my turn. Dimamni Badana, your turn. Dimamni Badana, okay. Now we have it. Now we're going to sing it. And let's imagine, let's imagine that we are all standing in a circle, 100 people, all of us with closed eyes on earth in this place you imagined previously when Augie was telling you, imagine the place your children want to have. So let's take this deep breath in. 
and close our eyes and just follow me, my words, my voice, even with humming or just the words, as you feel like. It's not about the words, it's about the intention. We're going to repeat it a couple of times. As this or now, this is how we start. The world has gone wrong. Please take us home, mothers, fathers, elders. Azizona, Ezemakuli, Azizona, Dimamni Badana, Azizona, Ezemakuli, Azizona. Dimam ni badana azisona eze makuli azisona dimam ni badana azisona eze makuli Azizona, dimam ni badana. Azizona, eze makuli. Azizona, dimam ni badana. Azizona. Eze makuli, azizona, dimam ni badana, azizona. Eze makuli, azizona, dimam ni badana. Azizona, eze makuli. Azizona, dimam ni badana. Azizona, eze makuli. Azizona. Imam ni badana. Hmm. Stay for a couple of seconds in this silence. The world is gone wrong. But the elders in us are going to take us home because they know the way. And remember, we are still here and now. What a great opportunity to be here and now. And let's open our eyes and let's come back here. And I want to thank you. And we want to thank you from the deepest part of our hearts for showing up today. For you, for us, and for all of us. Oof. Take us home, guys. Take us home. Thank you so much. Have a lovely evening. Thank you so much also from my side. It was a great pleasure and great joy. And let's meet again. Just a reminder, we are born for these times. Thank you so much. Okay, too. Thank you too. And yeah, I wish you two very miraculous next days before our next meeting. And don't stop imagining. Don't stop dreaming the future. And by dreaming it, you're making it. Thank you. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.